Ladies and gentlemen, uh, on that note, it is time that we accelerate the intelligent outcomes with the use of AI. Now, this person, our next presenter who's going to come up on the stage is uh, somebody who is very passionate about work. He hails from Dell Technologies. So let's get set to welcome him. Eyes on the screens, please. Now fasten your seatbelts and get ready to embark on an exhilarating journey into the captivating world of artificial intelligence. My name is Daisy and I am here today to introduce to you an amazing and seasoned speaker who brings with him an impressive 23 years of experience in the dynamic realm of IT. He has traversed the ever-evolving landscapes of technology, witnessing the remarkable advancements that have shaped the digital age. This won't be just another ordinary presentation. Our speaker believes in infusing his keynotes with a delightful dose of fun and loves to create an engaging atmosphere that captivates minds and sparks imagination. Today, he will transport us to the world of AI, a world to which I actually belong, and where algorithms learn to tell jokes that even can make Alexa and Siri laugh. Without further ado, join me in welcoming from Dell Technologies, Sharbel Zrabi, Channel Pre-Sales Director for Central and Eastern Europe, Middle East, Turkey and Africa. Daisy, my AI friend. Good morning. Salamu alaikum. You had more energy for her. Why? I mean, she's more beautiful than me, of course, but... <laughs> All right. So, who like Daisy? Say hi. Good. So if you want to do something like that, go to synthesia.io and you can create your own videos with your own text and everything that you like to do. Good. So today, we're going to talk about AI. And actually today, technology has been advancing in ways that nobody could have imagined. We actually look at our lives today and we see things that we thought impossible. We've seen it in movies. We've seen self-driving cars. We've seen robots. We've seen some forms of artificial intelligence, but we never thought it was possible. And at Dell, what we've been doing for the last few years is actually focusing on some emerging technologies, putting all our focus on the research and development. And to be more specific, we were, we've been developing multi-cloud solutions, edge, we're talking about 5G, we're talking about data management, and of course, security. But at the heart of all that is AI. And AI is going to be massive. And I'll tell you why. Actually, I'm going to give you an analogy. Think back in time. Now we have connectivity. Who of you would want to live in a world where there is no connectivity, no 5G, no internet at home, no Netflix, no WhatsApp. Anyone who wants to live in that world? Good. So when the internet was created, it changed the way we interact. It changed the way society acts, because we used to call each other. We used to sit around the table, eat dinner, and talk. Now, actually, sometimes I need my wife, and I'll text her on WhatsApp. Hey, can you please do this or like talk to JP, my son, or whatever? So it's really bad. But actually, it happened. And what's going to happen with AI is going to be the same. It's going to change societies. It's going to change the way we live, for real. So before we delve deeper into AI. What is AI? And why now? So artificial intelligence is not new. Artificial intelligence has been there since the 1950s. Imagine that. And to put it in simple word, it's actually a machine mimicking a human behavior. And AI has a lot of subsets. Machine learning is one. And machine learning is something that we experience today and have been experiencing for a while. Who can give me an example about machine learning in our daily life? Anyone? Come on. Chatbots, Chatbots are one. Anybody else? 
My presentation, yes, thank you, but that's more later. Smartwatch, for example. Smartwatch, sorry, smartphones. And my smartwatch specifically, I mean, since last year, I've been fighting with it. I mean, last year, during this time, I presented about the edge, and I spoke about the smartwatch. And since then, I've been fighting with my smartwatch, and I changed three of them until this one, because I lost weight. Before It used to tell me always that I'm fat, OK? So yeah. But again, another subset is deep learning. And deep learning is about machine learning but it's multiple layers of machine learning, multiple algorithms working at the same time, which we call the artificial neural network. And that ANN is actually what helps us predict things. So another example for deep learning is the self-driving car. So imagine a car driving on the highway or on any road, and then there's an obstacle, or there's a human being, pedestrian, crossing the road. How is it going to take that decision? Is it going to like actually say, I saw something and send it to the core, to some data center somewhere? No, it's going to happen on the spot. And this requires a huge amount of processing power that's going to be in that car to be able to, less than a fraction of a second, take that decision, because that time is the difference between that pedestrian still, in, still alive or probably died. And this is deep learning. Then you have generative AI. And we recently all started understanding what generative AI. And the hype started with, with what? Anyone? Chat GPT. So anybody did not yet use Chat GPT? Why? <laughs> Trust me, it'll make your life easier. So Chat GPT is a form of generative AI, and actually, there's a lot of application that we are using, like the one that I used to create the video. And if you are really interested to know where you can find those, OK? I'm working for Dell. I'm not supposed to you know, uh, advertise others. But there's a website called futurepedia.io, where every day you see at least 10 or 20, sometimes, new AI applications that you can benefit from in your life. So why now? Now, it's been there for the 1950s. It's now because data is there. And data is actually becoming so huge that we, we need to know how to maintain it, how to store it, how to protect it, how to ingest it, how to curate it. So it's very important. And the reason why AI now is starting to really make sense is because we have this huge set amount of data. IDC predicts that 2025, in 18 months from now, data that is around 40 zettabytes today is going to reach 175 zettabytes. So imagine that. And then the other three things, what we call the three Cs, are calculus. And today, we advanced a lot. So we know how to build new and advanced algorithms that can help us generate insights, compute. Now, in a small form of compute like that, you have a huge processing power. And this is what has been missing before. You probably needed a whole city of compute to be able to do what probably a processor does today, this four factor. And definitely the culture, because we used to look at data at some commodity. Now data is actually going to drive the digital age. And this is why now. And also, in 2023, based on a PWC survey, they believe that $15.7 trillion this year, globally, are going to be created because of AI. That's around 20% of the total GDP globally, which is around $70 trillion. So imagine the massive scale that AI did in very few years. And definitely, there's a lot of things happening in the enterprise. And today, leaders are seeing the benefits of AI. And the stats are on the screen, and you can see them. But nothing good comes without a challenge. AI comes with a lot of challenges. There's a lot of roadblocks that you might face. And some of them are very basic, OK? 
very common. But some of them are really important and they can be showstoppers. Things like the lack of skills. Imagine the biggest challenge ever today is the lack of skills. Any data scientist in the room? No? Actually, there is a lack of data scientists today. And data scientists are very crucial for any AI deployment that you want to do. And even the existing ones are not all A players, are not all you know, great data scientists. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is the infrastructure. And the infrastructure today needs to be AI ready. You need to have the right processing power. You need to have the right strategy in building your infrastructure. And definitely the data quality issues. Why? Because AI is as good as the data you give it. The more you train it, the more it performs better. But if you train it with data that is invalid, that is not good quality, it's not going to get you the good results. So all these challenges are actually things that we've been working on and trying to help our customers mitigate. Now, the hype of generative AI and why generative AI and how generative AI is going to help you change the status quo in your organizations. So we agree that traditional AI and generative AI are actually two important pillars in the AI world that's going to help any organization grow their business, reduce costs, find new opportunities. But there is a little bit of difference. Traditional AI is about just small assets small, I'm saying, in the number of millions of data points that we're going to analyze and we're going to use to make some predictions. Generative AI, on the other side, is more about billions of data points, and it's more about generating things like text, video, everything, graphics. And generative AI is really going to be a game changer in the enterprise. Also, some stats. But what's important is, those stats say, because everybody say AI comes with risk. Today, everybody say, or the majority of leaders who are leading organizations like yours, believe that the benefits of AI outweigh the risks. Of course, as long as it's done the right way. And there's a lot of gen, gen AI use cases. You name it, government, private, any sector, any industry, the sky is the limit. Many use cases. You can create your own. And that's what's important with AI. But when we want to create it, today a lot of users are using this generative AI like ChatGPT. But there's risk there. That's why organizations now they want to create their own ChatGPT or their own GPT. Why? Because today, and this happened, for example, it was in the news to Samsung and other companies where actually their employees were using ChatGPT to, for whether work or personal, but at the workplace. And actually, they ended up giving ChatGPT the rights to take proprietary data, for, which was, belonged to Samsung, right? So today, organizations need to regulate that. They need to make sure that their users know what they're doing with generative AI. And that's one of the reasons why organizations want to adopt generative AI in their own infrastructure, in their own organizations, whether for their own or whether for their customers. But deploying generative AI is not easy. And there are three considerations. One, it's about business, right? So we need to understand, show me the money. Business people are going to come and tell us, show me the money. How is AI going to give me more revenue? How is AI going to get me less cost? Show that to me, and I will pay you for it. The other part is the data, because data is huge. And then the infrastructure. So common questions that we're going to be asking, or that you're going to be asked if you want to be deploying an AI uh, application, are these. So do we have the right skill set? Is it going to give me the right competitive advantage? Am I going to get the right ROI, return on investment? And these questions are crucial. Do not go to the business leaders in your organization unless really you have everything set up, because this is when they will invest 
in your AI use case. So why Dell? It's very straightforward. We've been working on AI development for the last three years. And today on generative AI, we're creating, in partnership with NVIDIA, what we call the Dell validated designs for generative AI. And it's simply a full stack of infrastructure from Dell Technologies, and then a full stack from NVIDIA, where we have the NVIDIA GPUs integrated, as well as the NVIDIA software stack. And this is going to help our customers accelerate their business outcomes using the Gen AI applications that they are going to build, scale, because scaling is important, and definitely take the right decisions in a very secure way. So that validated design will look something like that, all right? Just a blueprint for you to see. And then there are Dell Technology Services, because without services, we're going to have a problem. Why? Because generative AI has two main pillars. First, the data. How are we going to manage it? What are we going to do with it, et cetera? And the second one is about the integration. How are we going to integrate it with what we have? How are we going to understand or automate the processes that we have? And so on and so forth. And that's why with the Dell services for AI and the data scientist teams that we have, we're going to actually strategize, help you strategize. So we will build together the roadmap. We're going to help you implement. So we're going to implement that in inference infrastructure for you. And we're going to help you adopt those use cases and scale with different use cases. And what happens today, actually, you have a use case. You test it. You build the right infrastructure for it. And then a few months down the line, you, build, you realize that you have another use case. And then you figure out, oh, I did not build the right infrastructure for the second use case. And then you have to start again, and you will end up with silos. And that's why consulting services are very important and, why we, we, and how we can help you through our consulting services. So to close, we have what you need. We're here to help you. And actually, I'm here all day, so happy to chat with you in, uh, during the breaks. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, have a good day.